Hello my oily and crystal loving, nature loving brothers and sisters. I'm Adam Barillet of Crystal Connections and we're going to try again because the last filming of Cancerian, my Cancerian lesson, didn't go so well and in the end it was all kind of blurry so hopefully technology is on our side now. So what I wanted to talk to you about today is the star sign of cancer. Not the disease, so if that's what you were learning to hear about, I'm sorry, this is the wrong lesson. We're going to talk about Cancerians. And as we've been going through the different star signs this week, I've introduced you to the idea that each star sign is kind of represented by seven years of life. Aries is 0 to 7, Taurus is 7 to 14, Gemini 14 to 21, and now we get to Cancerians, which are 21 to 28. Now, this is a stereotype or a generalisation, but what are we kind of focusing on at this age? We're kind of looking at settling down, starting a family, kind of coupling up and all those types of things. And this is very much the Cancerian energy. Cancerians are ruled by the moon, and so they have that real intuitive aspect, but also that mother and nurturing side. So loving and creating a beautiful environment is really, really important for the Cancerians. And so what we're going to look at is we're going to look at some different nature's gifts to balance that energy. As we know with all different star signs, they sometimes can, they've got some good attributes that we want to nurture, and some not so not much ones when they get a little bit unbalanced and we want to kind of un, <laughs> unencourage them. And a lot of the time I find that the advice is only shared on what's good to help them be, up them and share those p positive traits, but when they're a little bit unbalanced, how do we get them back to there? So that's what we're going to look at. So first of all, let's look at some crystals. Now, as I said, Cancerians are really loving and caring and nurturing, and so good old rose quartz is a really beautiful one for Cancerians. It has that gentle, soft energy. Those that have maybe heard me speak before about crystals of love know I'm not a big fan of rose quartz simply for the fact that it, does, it kind of gets overused. It's a bit like the Kardashians. Um, there are lots of different crystals of love, but when we want that gentle, forgiving, nurturing love, then this is a really good one. What I'd recommend if you're a Cancerian or if you have Cancerians in your house or in your space, grid rose quartz around to create that nice, loving, gentle environment. Now, what happens as well with Cancerians, sometimes, although they have this nurturing side about them, if they have a bit of a rough trot in life, they turn into the true crab. They're still soft on the inside, but they put up that hard exterior, that armour, and they can get a bit snappy with those claws. Um, and so what we want to do is use rose quartz in this case as well, because this is about forgiveness. If you're a Cancerian or are working with a Cancerian who's been very hurt, then what we want to do is we want to help to trust again, to forgive, to you know, be, go easy on themselves and go easy on other people. And rose quartz really encourages that. Now, being connected to the moon, the moon is really great at enhancing our intuition. That is why in the full moon, we kind of get stronger messages. We go outside. That is also when, during the full moon, you may feel a little bit scattered because your intuitive mind is trying to kick in, but you're still trying to use your active logical mind in your day-to-day -day basis. It would be ideal, I know it's, we can't all, but if we could take three days off during the full moon and just bring in that magic and really f see what those messages are. So moonstone, especially rainbow moonstone, is another beautiful crystal for Cancerians to use. It helps to enhance their intuition and really be guided by that. The great thing about Cancerians is they have a really good knack of understanding what's happening with people. They give really good advice. They should be wary of not giving advice when it's not invited, but when it is invited, they can really tune in and give advice from that person's perspective rather than what they believe is right. That's their beautiful, caring nature about them. And Moonstone really helps them to connect with that. It can also help them during the full moon to not get um, overwhelmed by the energies if they're a little bit off balance at that point in time. Now, if you want to go a bit higher up um, and get a bit of a high vibration crystal, there's a beautiful crystal called Petalite. It can be clear or white, but it can also be this beautiful soft pink. Now, that may look like rose quartz, but you can see there, see there's a little shimmer or shine dancing across that? It's not the light. I'm trying to get it for you. You may be able to see it. Um, but that is really, Petalite is a really powerful one. At, ah, hey, Glennis, how are you? Hope you're doing well in the tranquil room. Um... So this is a really nice one for, it basically surrounds you in a big pink bubble of love. And that is what we need to surround our Cancerians in so they can come from that loving, nurturing place. The beautiful thing about um, Petalite is that being such a strong vibration one, it works over long distances. And one of the things that I love to do is I love to connect um, 
I get two of these, and this is really good if you have a partner that works far away or does FIFO or travels a lot or something like that. You get two pieces of pink pen light uh, from exactly the same batch, bind them together with a ribbon, ideally a red or a pink one, or even a violet purple one would be nice, and allow these crystals to really connect with each other. And then when your partner goes away or you go away, what you do is you keep one and your partner has one, and it kind of connects that loving energy. So this is really great for Cancerians who for family, uh, you, it doesn't have to be a romantic partner, it could be children, it could be anyone kind of thing, it's staying connected to family. Um, this is a really nice activity for Cancerians to do, with, to feel connected to family members or people they care about, even though they're far, far away. Now on top of crystals, we can also use different essential oils. And although, I, you know, my page is called Crystal Connections, I've written many books on crystals, I've been introduced to essential oils in a major way in the last four years and I find they work really beautifully together. And stay tuned for some different work that will be coming out um, about working with essential oils. Um, so some essential oils that work really nicely with that Cancerian energy. The first one is myrrh. Now frankincense is known as the oil of the father, myrrh is the oil of the mother. Myrrh is beautiful for our skin, it really helps our skin to heal if there's any wounds or cuts. It's great to mouthwash with if you've got any wounds or cuts or any issues with your mouth. But it's also from an emotional or a spiritual perspective, it's very much about nurturing. It's got a very earthy, grounding kind of smell. It's like a big hug going, shh, come on, everything is going to be okay. Like that beautiful mother nurturing energy. And that really resonates with that Cancerian energy as well. Now Cancerian, to them, connection between people is really, really important. And the essential oil that facilitates close connection is marjoram. Marjoram is actually sacred to Aphrodite, as well as her son Hymen, as well as Mother Earth or Gaia. And all of these different things, uh, uh, Hymen, her, uh, Aphrodite's son, was the god of marriage. Sorry, we just had the power go out for two seconds or I got distracted. Um, Hymen is the god of marriage, uh, Mother Earth is all about connection as well. So um, what happens is this is really, really great for um, for allowing connect for you to feel more connected with other people and to facilitate connection. So if you're maybe having people around and you want to have a really deep connecting time, adding marjoram into the diffuser or aromatically dressing in it or mixing it with some other great oils like lavender can really open up for really deep and meaningful fulfilling conversations and connections. Now sometimes what happens is Cancerians, because they care so much, if things don't go well, if people don't honour the emotions, if you know, it, so, for some people, um, what Cancerians care so much about isn't as important. Cancerians can get a little bit um, nasty and emotional um, and start, you know, beating their chest and oh, it's all, oh, you know, oh, woe is me and that type of thing. They kind of go over the top. Um, you know, that I often say that they live. Sometimes Cancerians, there is a risk of living too much in the past, and when things go wrong, they'll retreat to their bedroom and pull out all the photo albums and flick through them and remember about all the good times when it wasn't as bad as it is today. If all that kind of thing is happening for a Cancerian or someone you're working with that's got Cancerian energy, Roman chamomile, the white petals connected to the moon, but it's this oil of gentleness and so it helps to calm down that overly emotional Cancerian. Now if you want to work with Cancer energy, then you can also work with an angel. We know about Michael and Gabriel and Raphael, but did you know that each star sign has its own guardian angel? And the, I love the name of the Cancerian angel. It's Muriel, like Muriel's wedding. Muriel is very beautiful and soft. She t teaches us to be delicate, to be gentle with ourselves and other people, to forgive people and to bring in that real Cancerian nurturing energy and to lead with love, to let love be your guiding force. Now, angels will often not appear to us in visions or meditations, although they can, but they use different signs and synchronicities to go, hey, attention. And the one that Muriel will use is the scent of your favourite flower. You'll smell it when there's no reason for it. And I remember once um, walking through Perth Zoo, and I could smell roses, which is my favourite flower. And I had no frigging idea um, what... Hey, hey, Paul. Hello from Western Australia. That's where I am too. Um, so I had no, there was no roses around. So there was no explanation for that. And that was Muriel. There was a bit of a longer story, which I won't bore you with today. But that was what Muriel was trying to get my attention with at the time. So if you ever smell flowers, 
Think about am I leading with love? Am I thinking with love? And that type of thing. Now, if you'd like to make an essential oil blend to connect with Muriel, try mixing two drops of rose, one drop of jasmine, and one drop of neroli. If that's not strong enough, just double the proportions or triple the proportions as well. If you'd like to connect with Muriel, also using rose quartz or pink petalite is really, really powerful. Call her through to help you lead with love. Now, the interesting thing about the star signs, did you know you were not just your star sign? You in fact have all the 12 signs of the zodiac within your birth chart and within your astrological makeup. And they can sometimes be of excess or not enough. And we can use these crystals and oils and different things and the angels to bring them into balance and to help you find greater balance in your life. How do you do that? Well, I'm teaching a six month online course Glennis, who joined us before, has already joined. She joined, starts off next Saturday with the rest of us. It starts on the 28th of April. It goes for six months. It's an online course. You get a newsletter with a video to watch each week. You can watch that video. You've got lifetime access to it, and you can watch that. And we, I will guide you through how to understand your birth chart and how to understand which signs in the zodiac you're in or out of balance and how to align and bring them back into balance using beautiful gifts like crystals and oils. We don't just do that, we look at how to balance your chakras. I teach my, um, my unique uh, 21 crystal chakra balancing system. We also look at oils for that. We look at what connecting with mermaid energy and unicorn energy and fairy energy and other mythical beings. I teach gridding, I teach the basics about crystals and oils, safety with oils, uh, cleansing of crystals, Lemurian healing, a whole, a whole epiph Epiphany? No, that's not a <laughs> cacophony of things, sorry. Um, at all in this 26 week course. If you'd like to know more, I'll, I'll put the link right under this um, video and you can check that out and find out some more information. Shoot me a message and I can have a chat to you and let you know all the details about that. It starts next Saturday, the 28th of uh, April, and I'd love you to join us. And of course, stay tuned. Today, um, we've looked at Cancer, I also looked at Leo today, so tomorrow we're looking at sometimes the very misunderstood sign of Virgo. So I'm Adam Barrett of Crystal Connections, thank you very much for joining me on this live today, enjoy your weekend, blessed be.